have your Bibles this morning, would like to ask you to please turn to the book of Jeremiah. Would like to read from Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 1, 2, and 3. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 1, 2, and 3. The main word that's on my heart this morning is truth. T-R-U-T-H. Truth. There's so many things taught in the Word of God about truth. There are hundreds of times that the word truth is used in the Old and New Testaments. And I pray that God will help us to have a, a greater appreciation for truth. In Jeremiah chapter 9 beginning with verse 1. The Word of God says, Oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers and assembly of treacherous men. Do you hear the burden of Jeremiah? He's called the weeping prophet. He said, I wish that I could just cry all the time. He's been crying. He's going to be crying again in the future. But he said, I wish I could just go out into the wilderness and find a lodging place there because my people, and that was the burden that Jeremiah had, was that the people of God, the Jews, the Jewish nation, they had turned their backs on God. They didn't love God. They didn't love, one of the things we're going to be looking at, is they did not love truth. Truth was no longer important to the children of Israel. And that's what grieved Jeremiah more than anything else, is that they did not love truth. They did not care about truth. And God, the, the Word of God says in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 4, the Word of God says that God is a God of truth. God is a God of truth. And the Word of God says, Thy Word is truth. God's Word is is truth. So if you don't care about truth, you don't really care about God, and you don't really care about the Word of God. Truth is important. Some people say that it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. That's a lie from the devil. It does matter what you believe. It matters what the Word of God says. And God's Word is truth. There are not a lot of different truths. There's one truth. The Word of God says now in verse 3, and this is the main thing we'll look at, in, De in uh, Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 3, And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. They do not even know God. A lot of times people think they know God, that they do not know God. John writes a lot about that. First John chapter 2, uh, the Word of God says, uh, if we say that we know God, but we're not keeping His commandments, we're a liar. You only know God, that word know means to have intimate fellowship and knowledge of, you only really know God if you're walking in the light as He is in the light. If you're following Jesus, if you're looking to God every day, if you're calling on the name of the Lord, if you know that Jesus is your great high priest, if you know that Jesus is your Savior, then you're going to be showing love to God, and you're going to love the truth that's taught in the Word of God. But now Jeremiah, in the middle of this uh, third verse, he, his complaint against the people of Israel is, they are not valiant for the truth. They are not valiant for the truth. Now, a person may say, I love the truth, but then when people are telling lies or distorting the Word of God, they don't do anything about it. I want you to know that those individuals who say that they love the truth, but they're not standing up for the truth, they do not really love the truth. They are not, as the Scripture says here, they are not valiant for the truth. A person that's valiant for the truth is going to be speaking truth. 
A person that, that is valiant for the truth is going to be sharing truth with other people. A, a person that is valiant for the truth is going to do what Jude says in verse 3. He says that we should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. That's the truth. We should earnestly contend for it. We should fight for the truth. We should stand up for the truth. We should despise anyone that would distort the truth of God's holy word. In fact, the Bible says that anybody that doesn't bring the truth, that they're not to be received into your house, neither are you to bid them Godspeed, because if you do, you're a partaker of that evil deed, the evil deed of one that would share or teach things contrary to the truth. So we need to be valiant for the truth. The Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 17, he makes this statement. He says, I am set for the defense of the gospel. And brethren, I remember it, and I, every time I read that verse, every time I think about that verse, I think about a young man in Columbus that uh, Brother Donnie Taylor, Brother Donnie uh, was a young man about 21, 22 years old when I first went there. And Brother Donnie had Down syndrome, and Donnie could not speak where you could understand him, but Donnie could hear. And God, God blessed Donnie to love the truth. He would sit there on the front pew with his mother in a wheelchair beside him, and he would sit there, and I'd be preaching, and he'd go, oh, oh. He would just rejoice in the truth of God's holy word. He loved the truth. And one day I preached that text, I'm sent for the defense of the gospel. And when he came out of the church, when he got to the door where I was, he went, Rah! he was set for the defense of the gospel. He was ready to defend the gospel. He loved the gospel. He loved the truth. And because he loved the truth, he did everything he could to defend the truth and to share the truth. To the best of his ability, he shared the truth with other people. He loved the truth. He, if you love the truth, you love God and, because God is truth. And if you love truth, you love the Bible because the Word of God is truth. So we need to be set for the defense of the gospel, just like Paul in Philippians chapter 1, verse 17. We need to love the truth. I, I, I want to go back and just kind of briefly share with you some of the burden that Jeremiah had because, listen carefully, in general, in America today, truth has fallen in the street. In general, truth is not being adhered to. And one of the biggest problems we have in America is not just that heathens don't like the truth, but one of the biggest problems is, is that so-called Christians have compromised with the truth of God's holy word. The only reason abortion is abounding in America today is because the children of God in America have not contended for the truth, they haven't stood up for what was right. The only reason that homosexuality is abounding in America today is because the people of God have not been, what's the big word that we're looking at today? Valiant. They're not valiant for the truth. They're not fighting for the truth. They're not standing up for the truth. I'm very thankful that God blesses Brother David whenever we begin to sing songs. If there's a verse that has some untruth in it, and listen, these songs are written by men. They're not always full of truth. But when there's a song that doesn't express truth, he changes the word so that when we sing, we sing the truth. It's just as wrong to sing a lie or untruth as it is to preach untruth. And the Word of God says that when we sing, we're supposed to sing in the Spirit and sing with understanding. And we're supposed to be singing words of truth. I'll tell you, children and adults will remember singing longer than they will direct quotes from God's word and it's good when they sing it's good when the songs express the same truth that's in God's holy word little children are taught to sing every day and people little children they can sing and they can learn songs of truth all of you parents be sure you're teaching the children the songs that express truth in God's holy word and even when a person gets old I've been with a number of people that had Alzheimer's and they couldn't carry on the sentence. They didn't know anybody in their family, but I could sit there beside their bed and I could sing, let's sing Amazing Grace. And I'd start singing and their mouth would open and the words would come out to that song Amazing Grace. 
I'll tell you, brethren, those songs are very important. It's important that we sing truth. It's important that I preach truth. It's important that you know truth. It's important that you are valiant for the truth and that you love the truth. Back up a couple of pages. I want you to know why Jeremiah was in such a pickle and fix and crying and weeping. Look at Jeremiah chapter 4. I want you to hear the condition of the children of Israel and see that this is the same condition that exists in America today. In Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 22. Jeremiah 4 verse 22. The word of God says, For my people is foolish. Can God's children be foolish? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says, A wise man built his house upon the rock. And then the foolish man built his house on the sand. A foolish man. He says, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, he's a foolish man. We as a people of God, we can be foolish. The Bible talks about five wise virgins and five foolish virgins. Those five foolish virgins were still virgins. They had let their light shine for a while, but their lights went out. You and I as a people of God, we can be walking in the light for a long time and then we stray from the truth. And the way James expresses it in James 5, 19 and 20, he says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the, fill in the blank, if any of you do err from the truth, can you and I err from the truth? We're foolish when we err from the truth, but we can err from the truth. And we need to pray that God will help us to convert one another. If you're valiant for the truth, if you are valiant for the truth and you see somebody erring from the truth and you love your brother, you're going to go out and try to convert them from the error of their way. Jeremiah expressing in Jeremiah 4.22, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. But to do good they have no knowledge. They didn't know the truth of God's word. Have you ever, have you ever been ignorant of truth that's in God's word? Have you ever not known truth that was in God's word? How do you go from being foolish and ignorant... The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1, he says, For I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. There's a lot of ignorance in the house of God today. And, and, and the people of God need to know, what can I do to stop being ignorant? What can I do that I know the truth? What can I do that I will stop believing error and believe truth? Let's back up in our Bibles to uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 15 very quickly. There's a lot more in Jeremiah I wanted to get to, but I just want you to know Jeremiah had a reason to cry. Jeremiah had a reason to cry because of the condition Israel was in. And we have a reason to cry and weep today. Sometimes, brethren, I get discouraged and despondent when I look at the condition in Washington, D.C. But I'll tell you what discourages me more than that is when I look at the condition in the churches and churches that once loved the truth and stood for the truth and defended the truth to watch them turn their back on the truth and go away from God. It breaks my heart. I know preachers today that are preaching, that are trying to the very best of their ability. And they have labored, and they've labored, and they've taught, and they preach the truth. But the people rebel against the truth. And the Bible says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. If you ever rebel against the truth, I want you to know you're not, just rebe you're not really rebelling against the preacher. You are. But ultimately, you're rebelling against God, and you're rebelling against the Word of God. Amen. And we need to know the truth. Lord, teach me the truth. Show me the truth. Help me to know the truth. Help me to be valiant for the truth. Help me never to forsake the truth. Proverbs 23, 23 says, we're going to get to Second Chronicles. I hadn't lost my mind. But listen, the Word of God says in Proverbs 23, 23, by the truth. So everybody goes out. We've got Bibles galore. There are more Bibles in America than there ever, have ever been before. Every home has a lot of Bibles. I've got six or eight or ten Bibles at least. And, and you and I as a people of God, we need to understand that buying the truth doesn't mean that you just go buy a Bible. It's important once you've bought a Bible that you then read and study the Word of God. When I, when I was able, you know now 
you can't really go and visit at uh, the nursing homes like you like you used to could but used to when you went around visiting you know what a great portion of the people in that nursing home were doing every day when you got to their room they were sitting there with the Word of God reading the Word of God they were buying the truth they were studying they were praying God show me the truth they love the truth they love God they love the Word of God they love truth and they studied the Word of God by the truth you buy a Bible but you then buy the truth by studying and praying and begging God to teach you the truth and find you a Bible teaching person that loves the truth and knows the truth and get them to help you understand the truth. Amen. You remember when Philip went to the eunuch and the eunuch had been up to Jerusalem to worship. He was a very godly man but he was on his way back. He was just sitting there in his, in his chariot reading Isaiah chapter 53 and God sent uh, Philip to the eunuch and the eunuch was reading and he said I don't understand this passage of scripture well in fact Philip asked the eunuch he said understandest thou what thou readest do you understand what you're reading he said how can I except some man guide me listen brethren you need some teachers of the truth we need more teachers of the truth. We need more men that are valiant for the truth. Every church ought to be full of men and women and children that love the truth and will not compromise with the truth. And I beg and encourage all of you, I'll tell you I'm the most blessed pastor on the face of this earth because I have a body of people that for the most part they love the truth, they defend the truth, they're valiant for the truth. And I rejoice because I know and understand that if I die, Brethren, you're still going to keep right on contending for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Because you bought the truth. You studied the Word of God. You know what the Word of God says. And you're going to be valiant for the truth. Alright, we're in 2 Chronicles chapter 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 15. We're talking about being valiant for the truth. Loving the truth. Loving God who is truth. And loving the Word of God which is truth. 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Listen to the first three verses. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. God who loves you with an everlasting love will not always walk with you if you Depart from God, he will depart from you. Now verse 3. Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. They were without three things. They were without the true God. You know why they didn't have the true God? You know why the true God was no longer with them? They had departed from God and what had God done God had departed from them that's taught in the previous verse so they were without the true God and then they were without a teaching priest do you know what causes a body of people or a, a nation to lose teaching priests do you know when do you know when God stops sending teaching priests it's when the people harden their heart against the word of God and then God will send a famine in the land not a famine of eating and drinking but a famine of hearing the word of God and the truth for the most part is not being taught today I have good friends who are pastors that, that they just tell me brother Bill I know I ought to take a stand on this and this and this and this but I just can't do it you split the church let me tell you something brethren I'd rather have five people that love the truth and are valiant for the truth than to have five thousand people that don't care about the truth Amen. a house divided against itself cannot stand and when there are those that begin to promote things that are contrary to the word of God, it's important that you stand up against, whether it's me or whether it's anybody in the church. You need to first try to convert them. They can't be converted. You have to put them out of the body because false teachings cannot be tolerated in the church. So they were without God. They were without a teaching priest and they were without the law. You know where we are today? As a nation, you know where we are today? exactly the same place we're without God and we're without a teaching priest and we're without the law 
What's happened to the laws of God? They've been scrapped. They've been abandoned. The Supreme Court and uh, Washington, D.C. and Congress, they have despised the laws of God. And so, if you love the truth, you've got a big job ahead of you. Don't give up. Don't give up. You keep on standing up for the truth of God's holy word. Go with me very quickly to the, to the New Testament. John chapter 8. Chapter 8 verses 30 through 32. John chapter 8 verse 30. As he spake these words, this is Jesus spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, what does it mean to continue in the word of God? Well, one thing it means is to continue reading and studying the word of God. Every day you need to read and study the word of God. If you continue in my word, it not, just mean, it not only means that you're to read and study the word of God, but you're to continue walking the way the word of God tells you to walk. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. You're not a disciple of Jesus if all you do is go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. That does not make you a disciple of Jesus. It's the way you live day in and day out, seven days a week. You are generally known, it generally is known whether or not you are a disciple of Jesus. Not by the words that just, not just by the words that come out of your mouth, but by the way you walk, the way you live. That's the way you identify a disciple of Jesus. Doesn't matter what my lapel pen says, I might a pale pen can say I love Jesus All, I can have any kind of I can go around with a big cross around my neck that doesn't make me a disciple of Jesus continue in my word if you continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed now verse 32 and ye shall know the truth you want to know the truth you want to know the truth continue in his word keep studying his word keep walking in the light of his word keep obeying God and you Jesus promised here he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I'll tell you, brethren, the truth will make you free from a lot of false teachings that are in the world today. The truth will make you free from a lot of fear. The truth will make you free in multitudes of ways. Don't have time to just go to all the different ways that knowing the truth makes you free, but it's a great blessing to know the truth because it will make you free. Go with me to uh, 2 Timothy. Uh, I, I don't have time to stop at, at, at John chapter 16. We've been sp studying some about the Holy Spirit, haven't we? The Holy Spirit, also called the Holy Ghost, also called, give me another, Comforter. the Comforter, also called, helper. say it again, helper. helper. Yes, the Holy Spirit is our helper. What's another thing? The Holy Spirit is our teacher. What's another thing? The Holy Spirit is... This, yes, the Holy Spirit, John 16 verse 13 says, The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Any spirit, are there a lot of spirits in this world today? Brethren, I've prayed sometimes and I felt the Spirit tell me to do something. But if it, if it doesn't harmonize with God's word, if it contradicts with God's word, that's not the Spirit of truth that's, that's speaking to me. So many people say, well, the God that I serve wouldn't do something like that. You better read your Bible. The God of the Bible will strike people dead. The God of the Bible will take children away from their parents when they commit adultery. The God of the Bible has the power to bring you and me to our knees. We better be careful about how we live every day. The God of the Bible is the one that sent the flood in the days of Noah. The God of the Bible is the one that sent fire and brimstone down on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, but he wouldn't do that to America because America is the special place that God has for his wonderful children. America is not the same America it was 200 years ago. It's not the same America it was 100 years ago. It's not the same America it was 50 years ago. The America of today is just like the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't you doubt what God will do to America. He'll bring us to our knees. Because we are not, give me a four, four we're not what? Valiant, Valiant for the truth. 
I hope, I hope this moves and motivates every one of us that we'll be more valiant from the, for the truth. All right, now we're in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look, beginning at verse 15. We're going to have to hurry to finish even just a half of what I've got, got on my heart. How do you buy the truth? Well, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 says, Study! Study! <coughs> Sometimes when I'm studying, it's dry bones. Anybody know what I mean? Sometimes when I'm reading the Word of God, I just think, now, it's still pretty, but... Sometimes when I'm reading the Word of God, let me go to the other side. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm reading the Word of God, I think, man, I've got a hundred sermons to preach. And I'll start taking notes and taking notes and taking notes. And Kylie will come over to file those notes and type some of them up. She said, Papa, if you live to be a hundred years old, you're never going to finish all these things you've got to preach. That's right. But other times I can read and study and study and, and it's dry. Keep studying. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me tell you something. Listen carefully. How many heavens are taught in the Bible? There's only one heaven when this world is over, but there are at least three heavens. Paul said he was caught up to the third heaven. If you don't know what the different heavens are, you need to study. The Word of God talks about different worlds and different hells and uh, different heavens and different salvations. The Word of God is full of things that if you take one word and you apply it the same way every time, you cannot know the truth. You have to study to rightly divide between all these different subjects that are in the Word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Phileus. He wasn't afraid to point out people that were teaching false doctrine. In verse 18 he says, Who concerning the truth have erred. Those two men had erred from the truth, saying that the resurrection is past already, and they overthrow the faith of some. Chapter 3. Don't have time. You go home and read chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. It talks about in the latter days, perilous times shall come. It talks about people are going to depart from the truth. That's in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy 4. Timothy, the Apostle Paul, when he wrote to Timothy, he was concerned that Timothy always was valiant for the truth. And so he warned him about all these things of how people will depart from the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. Preach the word. What's Paul telling Timothy? What do you need to preach? Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Do people like to be reproved or rebuked? But what does a preacher have to do? He has to do those things. Verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's, they're going to not endure the truth. But after their own lust shall they heap, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Can you turn your ears away from the truth? You can. I'm telling you, it's a ser the consequences of turning your back on the truth. The consequence of not being valiant from the truth is serious. You sit back and do nothing, God will judge you for it just as much as if you uh, preach and teach untruth. Let me go in closing to one more verse of Scripture. Turning your Bibles to 2 John. There's 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Three little books at the end of the Bible. Please follow this in closing. 2nd John, 2nd John, verse 4. The Word of God says in 2nd John, verse 4, He says, and John writes more about truth than anybody in the whole Bible. In the Gospel of John and in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. 2nd John, verse 4, says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. I'll tell you, brethren, I, me, Bill Mullis, I rejoice greatly when I see my children, and I'm not talking about just Marty, Melissa, Marie, and my 9 or 10, 11 grandchildren. I'm talking about my children in the faith, too. I rejoice greatly. 
I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in the truth. Not just talking about the truth, but walking in the truth. Now, 3 John, turn one page. 3 John, listen to verses 3 and 4. 3 John, verses 3 and 4, he says, For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. I can amen that. I have no greater joy. And any parent here that really loves your children and your grandchildren, you will have no greater joy than to hear that your children are walking in truth. May God help us all as his people to be valiant for the truth and love the truth and love God and love the word of God is my prayer for Christ's sake.